Welcome to Equal Entertainment. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. There's a new film that's telling a true story that I am fascinated with and I've never heard about before. Black composer Joseph Bologna is considered to be one of the greatest of all time. His rise through French society as the son of an enslaved woman and a plantation owner is often ignored, but it's nothing short of remarkable. Joseph Bologna was born in the Caribbean and was relocated to France at the age of four. He trained rigorously and became well known to those in the French royal court. King Louis XV made Bologna an officer of the King's Guard and given the title Le Chevalier de Saint-Georges. The new film Chevalier dives into his life as a young boy to the heights of his career and the hatred he faced. I spoke with Kelvin Harrison Jr., who plays Bologna, and Samara Weaving, who plays Marie Josephine, about sharing Joseph's story with the world, the struggles he's faced as a Black man during the 18th century, and more. Well, first, congratulations on Chevalier. This is such a, a huge film, and I have to admit, I had never heard of Joseph uh, or any of his accomplishments, which seems like a crime. And I wonder, would you talk a little bit about uh, your first awareness of Joseph and um, what it was like to see him come alive on the page when you first read the script? Yeah, I mean, this was the first time I had ever heard of Joseph as well. So we were all in the same boat, it seems like, unfortunately. Um, yeah. But um, it was such an exciting study. I think yeah. I couldn't believe how much he had accomplished. I couldn't really believe how much he he um he was able to withstand um yeah. with all the restrictions and and just limitations they put on him as a man um mm -hmm. and then the work he was able to produce was just absolutely stunning dynamic yeah. and charismatic and showed so much of who he was as a as a as an artist but also what he had gone through as as a person yeah, you know, uh, thank you for that. And I, I think it's really interesting. The film does not shy away at all from showing how he was used as, you know, an artist and for his excellence, uh, for, you know, to entertain people. Uh, but then, you know, when it got to be, when he was so clearly heads and tails above the rest, that people really were afraid of him, white people. And I wonder if you would talk a little bit about, uh, you know, playing into that and the fact that the film really does shine a light on those um those aspects yeah i i think um joseph understood the game you know the only way he could survive it and get to do the thing that he loved was to play the game and yeah. um the game was assimilating to their culture the game was was wearing the wig and and and, and having and convincing himself that he felt proud to be a <laughs> chevalier convincing himself that he felt um safe um, being friends with Marie Antoinette, knowing how she had behaved with some of her other counterparts at the time. Um, yeah. He convinced himself of so many things just so he could do what he loved and just mm -hmm. so he can get that sense of what he felt when he was at home, when he first fell in love with music, with sound, with with um, just culture. That's what the that's what the where the passion was. That's where the root of it was, that little seed that was planted inside him. And he was constantly just trying to get back to that. Um, mm -hmm. But that doesn't come out with that doesn't come without diminishing a little bit of who he was in the process and psychologically spiritually um yeah. just to just to survive yeah yeah thank you I, you know this film uh really kind of highlights the the beauty of art and art and music as a, a form of healing and you know and self-care i yeah. think and would you talk about uh playing that part of joseph's life you and know, how art figures in. I think Joseph's music to me feels like his own personal diary that he likes to share with everyone. You know, when I listen to it, I can hear the ships when he was four years old and, and leaving Guadeloupe to Paris and being scared as a little kid. I can hear um I can hear just being in the hallways and not speaking the language of the of the country at the time and having to relearn what it meant to, to look like other. And having to to find his his to find some understanding of who he was in that, while also having not a clue anymore because he's only so little and so young, um, yeah. and I think um, it's just it's just so exciting to be able to just go on that musical journey with him because he shares so much of himself um in that only safe space the only place where he can control anything is in through through that um those compositions 
Um, mm-hmm. and, and I don't know, that's, that's where the magic is for me. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you. And then, um, would you talk a little bit about how you prepared for this enormous role? Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> um, I, I, um, I got the job when I was still doing Elvis and I was in Australia and I knew immediately that I kind of had to to get the ball rolling. So I called my buddy who is a, a violin teacher that I met on Cyrano and he um, started getting the fundamentals back into my, to my body. And mm. um, then from there I went to New Orleans where my dad is a music teacher. And so he started getting me prepped up for about a few months and I did about, and then I went to LA and then I went to Prague and I studied in every, every, you know, every city in every country. And um, I did that for about five months, six days, seven days a week, six hours a day, just Ooh. consistent, diligent um training in order to make sure i was honoring him because you can't play joseph without really being without really showing the virtuoso that he was um and so that was really important to me approached about this project or read the script what what were the sorts of things that stood out for you yeah um i mean stephanie robinson is such a fabulous writer and i love um the characters she created i thought marie josephine was um so strong um but vulnerable and um i just love that she was you know she's trapped in this relationship but she rebels and does what she wants to do um which was a huge risk back then it was life or death Mm -hmm. um I thought she was funny and smart and charming and a really well-rounded character and not just a damsel in distress, which is what I loved about all the female characters in this movie is that they sort of defy that um, stereotypical uh, stereotypical female role that we see in period dramas that, you know, because they did rely on men so much for their own well-being and safety, which is very true. Um, Stephanie kind of turned that on its head a little bit. Yeah, well, your your character very much has her agency and very modern ideas about love and marriage, which I think is really remarkable. Right, and you don't see a lot of um, films or books or any really representation of women back then um, saying that to an extent, especially in the 18th century. I mean, I guess Little Women was, you know, very forward thinking, but prior to that, I'm trying to think if I've put my foot in my mouth or not. <laughs> no, I think you, you're pretty safe, I would I would say. <laughs> I, I wanted to also touch on a little bit, I mean, because uh, this film focuses so much on, you know, beauty in art and, um, you know, as, you know, art is, heals and can often be an escape and um and I wonder would you talk about playing this this artist at this time and you know what that means in terms of just you know how art can heal uh people around uh around them around it (laughs) yeah I think if you are a creative person and you're cut off from being creative you can get really depressed because it is such a um important way of expression uh especially back then when the culture was so um stifling that uh, the only way people could express themselves was to go to the opera and see these um actors just let loose and touch on all (laughs) kinds of insane um stories Thank you so much to Kelvin and Samara for speaking with me. We can all learn a lot from Joseph Bologna's life and legacy. Chevalier hits theaters April 21st. Thank you for joining me for this equal entertainment. There are many great stories out there. We're covering the projects in TV, film, and music that are advocating for all. Visit the Advocate Channel YouTube page for more coverage and full interviews with the biggest names in entertainment. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. I'll see you next time.